Uh, let's delve a little bit more deeply, shall we, into those events at HMP Birmingham, perhaps the, the worst prison riot that we've seen since Strange Ways back in the 80s. Uh, let's speak to Steve Dagworthy. He's a prison consultant, a former prisoner himself, and joins us uh, from central London this morning. Steve, thanks very much for being with us. Um, I suppose the, the question that will be on, on many people's minds this, this afternoon uh, is whether or not there is a, a sense of inevitability about riots such as this, that when you bring together people who have committed offences, deprive them of their liberty, and then further in the run-up to Christmas uh, place that kind of emotional pressure upon them, I mean, is it the case that we should simply expect to see events such as this you know, periodically? Well, no, not really. I, don't, I, don't, I think that's unfair. I think, I think the reason why we're seeing events that we are recently here at uh, Birmingham and recently at, uh, previously at Bedford is because prisoners are, are basically fed up of being treated like animals. Uh, and the situation is now is that we have too, too few officers looking after too many prisoners and too many prisoners with, with, with too little to do. Uh, and if, if you cage prisoners like animals in these Victorian prisons where two men to a cell, were, which was designed for one, um, and then you unlock them and say immediately, sorry guys, you've got to go back to your cell. I mean, they're inevitably going to turn around and say, look, we've, we've had enough. Something has to, we, we, we're rebelling. Um, you can compound that with the Christmas period. Obviously, emotions are running very high. A Birmingham prison is a Category B local prison, which is probably one of the most emotionally charged prisons because it's where everyone starts their prison sentence or their own remand or possibly starting very long sentences. So this, this is foreseen. This is something that's caused, in my opinion, purely and simply down to the, the cuts that have been brought about by, by previous governments. Uh, give us an idea of the, of the scale of the cuts that have taken place to the prison service over the past few years. I mean, speaking to the Prison Officers Association yesterday evening, they flagged up the fact that you know 30 of their members have resigned from their posts at this one particular prison in recent weeks. And, and the conclusion that you have to draw from that is that from their perspective, uh, the situation is untenable. Well, it's just not the 30 from Birmingham. In, in, in honesty, since 2010, when, this, when the system was already creaking, I mean, I was there in 2010, so I can tell that from personal experience. Since 2010, there are 7,000 prison officers that have been cut from the system. Plus, there's been uh, cuts to spending in rehabilitation project, projects and vocational training. So, therefore, there's, there's little for prisoners to do. So, the net result of that is that prisoners are having to be confined to their cells because there are not enough officers on the wing um, to look after them. Um, so, they're, and they're confined to incredibly squalid um, uh, uh, cell structures. Plus, the, the, the lack that the, 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 the reduction in prison officers has brought about increases in security risk. There's more drugs coming in, there's more phones coming in, there's more SIM cards coming in. Um, and, and the net result of all that is, is absolute crisis and total chaos in our prison system. Why is this not being talked about more? I mean, you don't have to delve very deeply into social media or indeed into the archives uh, to discover stories about deaths in custody, deaths in prison, the amount of mobile phones that are able to make their way inside prison, the amount of drugs that are circulating, mental health problems amongst prisoners. I mean, the list of problems with the prison service is as long as my arm, but mm. successive governments have done nothing about it, apparently. Well, it's not a vote winner, is it? Really, let's be honest. I mean, every if the former justice secretaries, and I remember Ken Clark, I think in 2010, 2011, when he had some very, very good ideas on how to improve the prison system, he was shot down in flames and, re and, re and replaced by Chris Grayling, who came in from the completely other opposite end of the spectrum. He decided to cut, cut just not the meat, but cut into the bone of, of, of the fabric of the prison system. So this has been spoken about successively for years. We've been talking about it for at least two or three years in our our blogs and the Prison Officers Association have been warn have warning this, the, the various charitable groups have been warning this. We all saw this coming. So it shouldn't be a surprise that we are having a situation now where we're having riots, where we're having uh, suicides. You know, there's a suicide now every two or three days in prison, and our re offending rates are, are somewhere in the region Steve, of 50 percent. I'm, I'm so sorry, we are going to have to stop there. We really appreciate you joining us here on Sky News, uh, but Not we'll just all. run out of time. Thanks very Thank much. You. Thank you.